what is up everybody welcome back to the eclectic beard so this go around be looking at the animated history of france i know 90 percent of y'all being from the uk don't hate france however however it's also nice to take a look at rivals and well hell other cultures and histories so that's exactly what we're doing on this video so take a look at this video let's get into it France is located in Western Europe between... Oh, one second. My apologies. Take it off this, audio, uh, this auto thing for graphics or video quality. I don't know why. You got it on auto and for whatever reason you'll take and get like... It's almost like it blinks or whatever. Like, oh shit, I got to take and correct. France is located in Western Europe between Germany and the Iberian Peninsula. Before Didn't the turn that. of the first millennium, most of the region was inhabited by both nomadic and tribal cults. For those that have seen my other videos, you'll begin to notice this as a reoccurring theme with early European history. I was going to say, they were quite all over the place. I mean, they were also in, Ang uh, you know, what's the British Isles and, not mistaken, also uh, Germany and, like, they were all over the place. They got around a little bit. History. The cults were on some land, the Romans came and took the land, and then, poof, history begins. The cults were divided into two main groups, the Gauls in the south and the Belge in the north, but the area was actually quite ethnically diverse. There were Greek colonies in the French Riviera, and even a non-Indo-European people called the Aquitani, whose language and people is related to the modern-day Basque region. Gaul was captured for the Roman Empire in 58 BC by Julius Caesar, who brought the language of the empire, Volga Latin, which is the ancestor of modern French. One of the conquered tribes was called the Parisi, who founded a city on an island in the River Seine in 250 BC. Because of its strategic location and easy defensibility, it became an important Celtic city and eventually the capital of France, called Paris. Early Interesting. Did not... I love learning... That's one of the reasons why I love history so much. I, I, that's pretty cool. Parisi, right there in the middle of Paris. That, Love that. That's that's freaking cool. Now it's the capital. Who knew? It became an important Celtic city and eventually the capital of France called Paris. Early France shares much of its history with Germany, so if you haven't seen my other video on the topic, you can catch up by clicking here. But for our purposes, we'll pick up right after Charlemagne's Frankish Empire was split into three kingdoms. West Francia, which became the Kingdom of France, covered most of the territory familiar to us today, but for a while it was a very disunited and non-centralized power. In fact, I use the word kingdom very liberally, as the king really had no power at all in comparison to the princes, dukes, and clergy. Sure, he could sit on a throne and call himself king, but it was nothing more than a glorified title. One of the real problems came during the Norman Conquest of 1066, in which William the Conqueror became King of England while still remaining a subject to the French crown as Duke of Normandy, and I'm sure that won't become a problem anytime soon. Hugh of Capet seized power with It's amazing looking back through history, all the different tie-ins, like royally and like through conquests and stuff like that. It's funny because talking about the dukes and princes and stuff like that, as well as the priests had more power than the king, uh, at least there in France and stuff like that. Charlemagne, if I'm not mistaken, was also... He was Catholic. And... The church back in the day had all power basically like they had more say than the kings and queens and they were king makers basically until england and then henry said piss on that so yeah when he was elected in 987 <clears throat> establishing the capetian dynasty however again the title of king meant very little the french during this period answered the call to crusade with fervor and the catholic church grew in significant importance with the clergy holding much power and influence in the region with each passing decade, the Kingdom of France lost more and more land to the Anglo-Norman kings to a point where all that war was fought between Philip II and Richard the Lionheart. But with Richard's death in 1199, Philip managed to conquer much of his holdings in France. Tensions came to a boiling point after the death of Charles IV since his only legal successor would have been the English Edward III and a war was erupted in the disputed lands lasting more than a century, thereafter known as the Hundred Years' War. During that's, that's one thing I'm going to take a look at, the Hundred Years' War. How the hell are you at war for a hundred years? Like, holy crap. That's just, that's, it's a lot of fighting. Like, a lot of fighting. Y'all would love, I, it, surprise hockey isn't a national sport. 
Following the war, the countryside was ravaged by the Black Death, and when all signs were pointing to an English victory, a pious peasant girl named Joan of Arc lifted the English siege and helped repel the English from French soil. In 1477, France won the western half of Burgundy in a war with the Habsburgs and in 1532 incorporated the Duchy of Brittany, greatly expanding her territory. France became a European superpower in the next few centuries, notably fighting a war with their neighbours for land, fighting another war with their neighbours for religion, starting a sizeable colonial empire in the New World, fought another war with their neighbours for land, and became involved in the American Revolution. Debts from the wars began to mount, and the French peasants became increasingly dissatisfied with the monarchy, who by this point had gained unchecked power. The liberal ideas of the Enlightenment and the widespread famine paved the way for France's most famous political event, the French Revolution, as well as the rise of the military hero Napoleon Bonaparte. With the establishment of a French parliament and the storming of the Bastille, the revolution saw the execution of Louis XVI and widespread chaos in France. It's funny because the French Revolution also, it saw its own leaders eat themselves, basically. Like, the, the revolution ate a lot of its own leaders. A lot of those enlightened voices had their heads chopped off. Um, that's another interesting period I want to take a look at. Just because of different dynamics socially, I would say politically, but the the, mon the monarchy and everything that led to it up to that with Louis, especially Louis and uh, Marie Antoinette both taken and uh, just, but before that, excesses they were talking about and the unchecked power. There was so much stuff going on. And it's talking about the religious wars, what you had. Catholic Church basically trying to purge Anabaptists and Huguenots and just all kinds of like France is so fascinating as well historically just for so many different things especially that happened from about I think it's like 1600s to just before the just after the 1800s. I will eventually cover the revolution in more detail, but the main point to take away was the success of a mostly chaotic French Republic against the First Coalition, largely due to a talented general named Napoleon Bonaparte. He then seized power from the divided French Republic in the War of the Second Coalition and began to win many wars in many successive coalitions against France. Even after Napoleon's defeat at Waterloo, he left a permanent mark on France and Europe and ensured that French liberalism would spread throughout the world, even though that may not have been his intention. After the death of Napoleon, the country was politically unstable, but their economy was strong, building a large empire in Africa and Asia, enjoying cultural prosperity, but lost much of their dominance in Europe to the new formed German Empire. The Third Republic was formed and became the central focus for the German Empire during the First World War, who feared being encircled by an alliance between France and Russia. France joined the side of the Allies and fared very badly during the first phase of the war, but eventually won the war with Germany's surrender in 1918. The war reparations at the Treaty of Versailles granted France the territories they had lost during the Franco-Prussian War in the previous century, but the treaty also made them unfortunate targets of Hitler's Nazi regime just 20 years later. The French lost World War II very early on and were occupied by the Germans for the majority of the war, and much of their land was a theater of battle between the Allied and Axis powers. After the and yeah, they're still they're still finding battlefield stuff, munitions, bombs, and things of that nature over in different battlefields in France. It's, it's crazy the amount of fighting that happened in that country. Like, they got taken quick, but the resistance and also the fighting, not only by their troops, but also allied troops in that country is just... The defeat of the Axis powers, France rebuilt and sided with the capitalist West during the Cold War, and during this time lost their colonial empire. However, the modern-day French Republic is one of the founders of the European Union and the most visited country in the world with a huge tourism sector. Thank you so much for watching, guys. All right, so I'll leave a chance. Uh, check out this channel to be there's video original video links that you can actually watch other videos from channels, especially as far as history is concerned. That please take and also take a look. Consider subscribing and supporting these channels as well. Such really good work. See, this just wets my thirst to take and learn even more. Like I said, there's so many different things that I want to take and get into as far as his history is concerned um and, and france just again another long storied history so hope you enjoyed this y'all be good to each other love yourselves peace